So you finally reached the king, but standing between you and your destiny is one final challenge. My name is Kodiak, and today I'll teach you everything I know about defeating the hand of the king in Dead Cells. When it comes to killing a boss, there are two things that make all the difference, preparation and skill. The Hand of the King is the fourth and final boss currently in Dead Cells, and easily the most challenging. Before we talk about strategy, it's important to understand the moves that the Hand will use against you. We'll start with the offensive abilities. First, let's talk about the Hand's weapon, the Lance. The weapon the boss is using is slow and powerful. The boss has a few variations of his melee attack. In Phase 1, the boss will use a simple slash. After the first intermission, the boss's melee attacks become more complicated. During his two-hit combo, the boss lunges forward and then jumps into the air and slams into the ground. During his three-hit combo, the boss strings together three melee attacks. It's important to note that the boss can adjust which way he's facing during his three-hit combo. You may have noticed when you enter the room that there are small spike traps on either side of the encounter area. The boss's second main ability is a charge. Players caught in the path of the boss during this ability will be pushed in whatever direction the boss is moving. Players that get pushed all the way to the extremes of the encounter area will fall into the spike traps and take a sizable chunk of damage. It may be possible to free yourself from the charge by spamming roll or jump, but unfortunately, this isn't very reliable. The boss may charge more than once depending on which phase of the fight you're in. Quite possibly the most obnoxious ability in the fight, the Hand of the King will occasionally deploy a series of bombs. Due to the scattered nature of the bombs, players will have to constantly avoid the explosions as they detonate in sequence for a few seconds. Players that struggle with this mechanic can make use of items like the shovel to turn enemy bombs into ally bombs, both protecting you and damaging the boss. Players can also stand closer to the ends of the encounter area and lure the boss's grenades into the corner of the room, giving you more space on the other side of the boss to dodge the explosions. Next up, we have the Rock Pound ability. The hand will jump into the air and slam his fist into the ground, creating a rippling shockwave of rocks from the boss's location. In Phase 3, this ability is empowered. The hand will jump and charge up his incoming smash. When the boss impacts the floor, rocks will erupt over the entire encounter area, dealing damage to anyone caught still standing on the ground. The boss's final offensive ability is Rally. Periodically throughout the fight, the hand will drop three flags into the encounter area. Players will need to destroy the flags before they explode after six seconds. It's also important to note that at higher boss stem cell difficulties, the hand's abilities can inflict malaise. The boss also has two prominent defensive capabilities we should discuss. The hand will frequently employ a shield that reduces the effect of projectiles. This shield only covers the boss's front, but is effective against all bows. Unlike previous bosses, the Hand of the King resists controlling effects such as freeze, slows, and stuns. The boss isn't completely immune to these effects, but their effective time is greatly reduced. Now that you understand the boss's main abilities, it's time to talk about the flow of the fight. The Hand of the King will transition around 85% and 40%. During these transition phases, the boss is immune to all damage and phases out of the encounter area. The boss will summon a set of minions that players have to defeat in order to transition out of this phase. During the 85% intermission, there will be one elite enemy mixed in, and during the 40% intermission, there will be two elites. The types of enemies can vary, but players should expect to face Inquisitors, Grenadiers, Disgusting Worms, Cleavers, Lacerators, and Slashers. Once the elites in the transition are dead, the boss will move into the next phase, so be sure to clean up the non-elites first to avoid having to deal with the hand and the few remaining adds. As outlined before, the encounter does not drastically change during phases 2 and 3. The boss's melee combination gets more complicated, and in phase 3, the empowered rock pound is a particular nuisance. So let's talk strategy. If you've reached the hand of the king before, you'll already know that he's much more challenging than the previous bosses. As with most fights in Dead Cells, preparation is key to defeating the hand. When considering mutations, there are a few things to think about. Cooldown reduction mutations are essential for maximizing your damage. If you're building brutality, you'll want to think about taking Fireworks Technician, while Tactics players will want to consider picking up Efficiency. If you're struggling to heal during the encounter, consider taking Emergency Triage, which reduces the amount of health your flash recovers, but speeds up the use, making it close to instantaneous. Emergency Triage is unlocked once you've killed the Timekeeper six times. Finally, you may want to consider Recovery, Dead Inside, or Tough Nut for your third mutation slot. Choosing which of the three mutations you pick comes down to what you're struggling with. If you're getting hit into the spike pits a lot, then Tough Nut is the right choice. If you're getting hit more than you should and needing to use every heal available, well, then Recovery is a good call. For players not struggling with either, Dead Inside is always a safe bet, extending your health pool a sizable amount. Plan on reaching the throne room every time you start up a run. Consider what items you'll be looking for and how you'll spend your scrolls of power. 
If you're someone that likes to build around brutality, consider picking up items that have a faster attack speed. Jumping and mashing the attack button will allow you to float in the air just long enough to avoid some of the boss's ground-based abilities. Likewise, if you're building for brutality, consider picking up grenades that will output a lot of damage, such as the cluster grenade or the powerful grenade. Usually, I subscribe to the idea that the boss fights are marathons, not sprints. But in this case, the longer you engage the boss, the more likely you are to make a fatal mistake. If you're someone that does like to play more defensively, shields are a great option when taking on the hand. The damage reduction alone can mean the difference between life and death. And because most of the boss's abilities can be parried, it's a great option for players that enjoy a safer play style. Players can make use of Rampart special effect, practically negating the damage from the boss's melee combinations. It should be mentioned that the Spash abilities cannot be parried, and while the Charge ability can, it doesn't stop the animation of the Charge. Now, if you're like me and you prefer a tactics-based build, well, I've got some great news for you. As of the writing of this guide, Wolf Traps are incredibly effective against the Hand of the King. Players that choose the Efficiency mutation can practically root the boss in place, even with the boss's resistances to status effects. Because the encounter area is relatively small, players can also make great use of flamethrower and cleaver traps. And while movement and pairing effects aren't as effective on the boss, status effects such as fire and poison will help constantly chip away at the boss's health pool. It's also extremely important to pick up gear that boosts your damage output or reduces the amount of damage you take. Tactic items like the Ice Bow and Hakudo's Bow can provide you with a sizable chunk of damage reduction needed to reach the 75% cap. Ultimately, facing the Hand of the King is a test, culminating everything you've learned up until this point in your Dead Cells experience. While understanding the boss's abilities and patterns is important, nothing is more crucial than your preparation and skill as a player. Going into the throne room with gear that doesn't synergize and stats that aren't catered to a specific build may make the task of toppling the hand more challenging. Don't get frustrated, we've all been there before. The game is meant to be hard, and sometimes you just need to keep trying until something finally clicks. I'd also add that making liberal use of the floating platforms in the room will make the encounter a lot easier. Don't be afraid to jump up and avoid an ability. They regenerate really quick. If you have a specific question about the fight, please leave us a comment in the section below. We'll make sure to answer any concerns you may have about the fight. Or consider joining our Discord community, where we talk about the latest video game news, titles, trends, and of course, Dead Cells. I also wanted to give a special shout out to Hazit from the Dead Cells Discord community for contributing to this guide. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at the Game Gurus, thanks for watching. Go kick some ass and play on.